Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are. We've got all these fantastic questions, which we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, but before we do, don't forget, you know, the YouTube stuff, like, share, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Most importantly, you know what I'm going to say, you got to shop at kendostar.com if you like these videos, if you like fantastic, brilliant, amazing kendo equipment, the best in the galaxy, then you need to shop at Kendo Star. Now, of course, I would say that it's my website, but everybody agrees with me. You can check our Trust Pilot ratings. That's independent reviews from verified customers. You'll see we have actually got one of the best Trust Pilot scores on the whole of the internet, not just in the sector that we work in. So, yeah, we're pretty good. So, shop at Kendo Star. You win, I win. We all win. <laughs> okay, right, let's get to these questions. So, first one. Uh, this one is in two parts. So it says, one, when doing subiri, does it make sense to practice the mirror image to equalize muscle development? Right hand at the bottom of the scar. And two, if spectacles are worn, do the measurements of the men need altering? So um, I have heard that, you know, it's it, um, some teachers have sort of done that a little bit where they've swapped the hands around uh, to practice subiri, but it's, I don't think it's overly beneficial. I don't think it's massively um worth it <laughs> to be honest because you don't actually do kendo that way around um so no i don't think that it makes much sense to do that um i think you're better off spending the time practicing subiri in the way that you're actually going to do kendo all right so no i would not recommend doing that uh, in terms of spectacles if you're going to wear spectacles under the men depends how you're going to do it and um, there's obviously ones that fit inside the men already you could use those, uh, but if you want to use the ones you've already got, uh, then the best thing to do is let us know when you order the men, um, the width of them at the widest point, and it might be that you need to we need to adjust the men for it. Um, depending, uh, it can be quite a, I mean, a customised job. It needs a, a customised uchiwa, so obviously that would lead to increased production time. But it really depends on the width of the glasses themselves, all right, and the size of the men that you're going to take. Uh, so <clears throat> sometimes is the answer to that. <laughs> okay, next one. Fish says, I'm looking to challenge Shodan at the end of the month. Good. Uh, I felt very relaxed for my Ikkyu Shinsa uh, a few months ago, but now I can't shake the nerves. Uh, I'd love to hear some common mistakes for those who challenge Shodan, so I might do some last minute checks in the training. Uh, secondly, assuming I end up passing Shodan, I will of course be focusing on Nidan. In addition to that, however, I'm wondering if you have some thoughts on good ways I might be able to contribute to the Kendo community. I've been doing Kendo in some capacity since I was a teenager. Reasons for not testing sooner make for a long story, so I won't go into it here. Uh, and it's Spirit has stuck with me my whole life. My recent experience at seminars in Shinsei in the US, uh, the character of people there and the willingness of Kendo community to come together have made such a positive impression on me. Maybe it's too soon for hopeful Shodan to be worried about, but any input um, you have will be excellent. Okay, great. Um, I think that's a really good um, question. So look, the uh, the bar from Ikkyu to Shodan isn't huge, all right? So you don't need to be beating yourself up too much. If you got yourself through Ikkyu, the chances are you'll probably get yourself through Shodan. Um, the main thing, I think, um, you know, the I guess the difference I would look for uh, between Ikkyu and Shodan is if... When I'm looking at EQ, I just want to see if they've got the basics of ma mainly like Fumikomi. If you can make some strikes with some decent attempt at Fumikomi, um, then you're okay. Um, for Shodan, then I want to see that that Fumikomi has pro progressed a little bit and is starting to look like a proper Kendo Fumikomi. Um, and probably um, that you're starting to grasp, you know, the, the proper aspects of striking at this point. Um, and not just that sort of pattern stuff you see from IQ where they just go, yeah, step in, big men, run off to the distance, turn around, yeah, step in. And, you know, like I say, I'll pass you for that if, if you're doing Fumikomi uh, in IQ, but if you're doing that in Shodan as well, 
I'm I'm gonna start sort of thinking not really on the on the path of getting towards what Kendall really looks like. So um, you know, it needs to just be that little bit more uh what can I say, like considered, um, not just yeah, step in, big men run off sort of thing. <laughs> you don't have to do that for IQ either, by the way, but it isn't it is an easy way to pass it to be fair. Um <clears throat> so in terms of um giving back to the Kendall community, I think it's great that you want to do that or do. Um I think what you need to, what well the best thing you can do at your stage though is probably just get involved with your dojo a bit more. See if there's more you can do to help your dojo, maybe help get new people in, help people that are there already that are maybe junior to you feel more comfortable or do better at practice. That in itself is giving back to the Kendall community, right? Because it's it's increasing Kendall and in, you know uh, on the whole. Um I'd also see if you can um it's a great, you know, showdown level is a great time to sort of reach out to see if you can help out at like tournaments. If there's any tournaments, you can go there as a helper, you know, like doing scoreboards or uh, match timing and stuff like that. Um, I definitely think that's something worth looking into too. So there's a lot that you can do, uh, no doubt about it. Um, so either of those things I'd probably, yeah, recommend. Okay, next one. Uh, dear Sensei, thanks for always your online content. No, thank you for uh, enjoying it. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about my most recent grading attempt and I would like to know your opinion on the below. One, I've had people say that it's important to try to get the first strike after standing up from Songkyo. I've also been advised that you should wait, for lack of a better word, to try and build a relation with your opponent. Try some semi, etc. How do you balance the two and they seem like opposites? Is one more important than the other? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, is it considered rude to seek out a higher grade sensei and senpai in order to help overcome obstacles or improve your own kendo when I can't necessarily commit to regular practice with them? I feel like that's uh, what they are there for, but equally, if I can't regularly do so, it seems counterproductive. Three, if an opponent attacks you a lot and you end up doing lots of audio as attempts, is it a better solution to attack them at the same time or before they attack? Or is it okay to simply hold Kamai and let them attack into you if you feel there's no opportunity to be had against you? Hopefully that makes sense. Apologies for any misspelled Japanese words. Uh, all the best to yourself and your family. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Um, I don't think there's any misspelled Japanese words. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm a bit cruel on that, so... <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, it seemed all fine. So look, there's some really good questions there. The thing is, right, <clears throat> I'm not sure of the context of your question, right? Because I'm not sure what grade you're talking about you're going for. Because it does change a little bit depending on that. Um, when you're talking about building a relation with your opponent, that's not really necessary till at least fourth dan. So if it's before below fourth dan, then you don't need to worry about it. If it's above fourth dan, then or fourth dan and above, I should say, then um, yeah, it's it it. I understand it can seem a little bit paradoxical, but it's actually not. <laughs> it's difficult to get your head around this one, right? So um. I don't like this idea of saying you should wait. One thing I really hate is, um, or don't, it's not hate, I just don't really agree with, is this this concept that you sometimes hear that in a grading, especially like high level, like fourth dan, fifth dan, or something, you shouldn't attack in the first 10 seconds or something like that. It's like, well, that's, it's kind of contrived. You know what I mean? Like, it's not really right, is it? You, you should attack when there's the opportunity to attack. Um... So, look, yeah, it, of course it's important to try and get the first strike, uh, but it's not essential. Um, now, look, if you're, like, let, let me, let, let's make this easier, right? If you are talking about sand and below, you don't need to worry about this stuff. Just get up out of Songkyo and make your strikes, uh, you know, to the best of your ability, displaying your technical, uh, you know, your technical ability. Um, not randomly necessarily, but, you know, make sure that the strikes are, 
displaying your understanding of you called that or two. Um, <clears throat> don't worry too much about the relationship with your with your partner, though you will have a more successful grading if you're able to do that, because um, your strikes will be more successful. Having said that, right, if you're talking about fourth down and above, right, you want to come out of Songkyo, right, come out of Songkyo, and what you, yeah, you want to try and get the first strike, that doesn't mean you want to go, yeah, men, like this. It's not really it either, right? So what you want to do is you want to come up, yeah, and this one's going, yeah, both, yeah, like this, and then you're going to slight come together, and this is where you're going to get that relationship here, and then it's what, it's like, who moves here first then, this is where, this is, you're in the Wild West now, right, you're two, two cowboys about to duel, and you've got, you've got your hands over your revolver, and the one that draws first is the one that's going to win, but if you go at the wrong time, or you hesitate, something like that, you're going to get shot, yeah, and this is the same sort of thing here, is this, this part here, it's like that tense moment there, and then, it's not, bam, this way, it's first, Ta, semi. What happens there? And then, pam, if necessary. Or, pam, this one attacks at that moment, and maybe Devanamaza or something like that. Tried to make, tried to make that sort of technique. Um, so, it's not so much the one that necessarily makes the first strike, but it does look better if you make the first attempt to semi. Now, they're both, obviously, if you both do that at the same time, it's going to be weird. And at, like, fourth down, fifth down level, that's still something that you're just beginning to process. So, no one expects you to get it perfect, all right? So, don't worry too much either. But it's definitely, you don't want to wait there, all right? You come up at, out of Sonkyo, yeah, and then you start hunting for your opportunity. You start going after it, all right? You don't fly in for it. You get to your... Is Sokuito or your tall man first? Yeah, here yeah, get to your tall man first and then start to get to your Isokuito. Make something happen. Make something happen. Make something happen. And that's the part where you are creating that relation with your opponent, alright? Um don't wait for it to happen, you have to make it happen. Uh, about is it considered rude to seek out higher grades or senpai? Uh, no, I don't think it is. I think it's a. I think it's a good thing to do, um, and it's quite normal actually. Um, you know, as long as as long as you sort of understand and they sort of understand really that it might not be a super regular thing, um, for whatever logistical reasons. But um, it's it, it's it's definitely worth doing. Definitely worth doing. It's something that I I try and do as well. You know, like. I'm, I'm trying to challenge in my next grade too uh, in a few years um, and you know I I will try to seek out like the Hachidan senseis for advice on it of course I can't practice them all the time because I don't live where they live at the moment so I have to you know try to benefit from them in the short times that I can um, so it's, it's, it's normal it's correct I wouldn't worry about it too much it's definitely not rude uh, and then, and if they attack you a lot and end up doing lots, you end up doing lots of orjuaza. Is it better solution to attack them at the same time before they attack, or is it simply okay to hold command and let them attack you if you feel there's no opportunity to have against you? So here it's a bit of a balance, all right. If you are talking again about like that fourth dan, fifth dan uh, exam, and they're just coming at you gung ho, then um, it's it's something that I think a lot of people struggle with at that level. Um, is like they don't feel like they can take control of the Shinsa because their opponent is just attacking at them almost, you know, randomly or continuously. Um, but it can be done. It can be done. You just, you can't get drawn into their pace of the, the Tachiai. So what that means is, you know, they're going to go, let's say, let's just say, for example, they're, yeah, man, turn around, turn around, yeah, man, yeah, kote, yeah, kote, man, yeah, man, like this. What happens in between? Is you have to, they come in, yeah, come out, so yeah, man, like this, turn around, and then you have to take the initiative as soon as there's a break in it, okay? Between their attacks, you have to take the initiative, and that means, that means you, bam, pa bam, or juaza, bam, bam, divanawaza, or sometimes just either hold the kamai or deflect the strike. Um, don't step back and block like this, but you can deflect the strike um, if they're just attacking randomly, right? Um, you are, able to assert your control over the tachiai um, or you have to be able to all right 
So it's actually a good chance. If you are doing the fourth or fifth dan shin san, the other person's just coming at you sort of randomly, it's actually the good chance of you to, for you to show that you're able to take control of uh, of the tachi ai. Okay, so I actually think it's a it's a good opportunity for you. The problem is, is a lot of people don't quite understand what to do about it. So I, I realize that it is a difficulty. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, next one, okay. Uh, this is a long one. Hello, Sensei. If we are to uh, have perfect posture, uh, I'm not sure what perfect posture is, but anyway, uh, calculate distance, adjust, adjust distance, perfect posture again. Uh, feel your partner through the shinai. Uh, don't be too responsive to your partner. Adjust distance, watch your partners. Don't stare at your partner. Why won't you stare at the partner? Uh, take the center, don't push too hard for the center. Adjust distance again, actively seek for opportunity. Don't be too hasty, adjust distance. Lure the uh, partner into fake opening. Suspect a trap in the partner's opening. Check stance, check distance. Semi ashi. Uh, think posture. Kikentai no ichi. Bomei was a trap. Zanshin, adjust distance. How do we uh, relax, uh, <laughs> especially when training with higher grade, when we are to be more on the offensive as kakarite? Um, I think you're thinking too much. <laughs> I think you're thinking too much. That's what I think. <laughs> All this sort of stuff is what you're supposed to train in your your kihan and uchikomi, uh, kirikaishi. Uh, all these things are mainly done through training. And then when you do keiko, uh, you know you have to train a lot, so that a lot of it becomes natural. Um, you know, uh, and you're definitely adjusting your distance too much. You don't have that much opportunity to adjust your distance. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not you have like one <laughs> uh, and then uh, when you're you know uh, when you're with the higher grade especially uh, you have to abandon the idea that you're going to beat them or win that's the hardest thing to do because that's what you want to do you want to hit them and impress them and feel good about yourself for making a strike but that's not what they're there for so um, you care too much about these details um, that you aren't able to actually uh, move freely. Um, doesn't mean none of this matters because it does, but it has to. Most of this has to come through training uh, to be something that you do naturally without thinking about it. Um, but uh, especially things like posture. You know, your, your posture is easily trained to your body, right? So then um, the rest is gathered by experience about how you interact with your partner. Um, but, you know, you shouldn't be thinking about a lot of this stuff with the high grade anyway. Um, you don't need to think about luring them into a fake opening, for example, um, or not being too responsive. You should just be trying to make good strikes with full stemi and full uh, spirit. Um, but yeah, I think you think too much. <laughs> I'm not smart enough for all that stuff, personally. <laughs> right, uh, okay, next one. Uh, yeah, could you please clear up exactly the new Subazerii rules and how they are being applied in the UK and EU events? I'd like to make sure our guys train with this in mind. All right, so the Subazerii rules obviously have changed. Um, the Zen Kenen have put out a video explaining it, but it isn't exactly super in depth. Uh, it does leave some things in sort of grey areas, um, and they're intentionally grey areas because they trust the experience of the Shinpan. Problem is, we don't necessarily have the same access to that as they do in Japan, uh, outside of Japan. Um, but look, basically, you're not allowed to spend a lot of time in Subazori. That's it. <laughs> How it's been implemented in uh, UK and EU, EU events depends entirely on the on the place, uh, but essentially, look, you're not you're not allowed to spend too much time in Subazerii. All right, if you make a strike or what for whatever reason you end up in Subazerii, you have one breath, the one breath time, whatever that is, it's like a few seconds, to make a hikiwaza. All right, it doesn't have to be immediate, but you have the timing of one breath, so you can get to Subazerii. Nah, and then you can do an, do one, but you can't stay there for ages, yeah? If nothing happens after sort of one breath distance, both parties have to mutually separate. That's basically it. 
it's it's not major. Um, it's quite major, uh, but it's not, you know, it's not that difficult. Um, to be honest, I don't think it's a terrible thing uh, overall. Uh, I like it now they've added the caveat that you get one breath, one breath time to do a Kiwaza so that they're not totally destroying, um, you know, like everything but basic Hikiwaza after, after Tayatari. <laughs> uh, so you can still do Hikiwaza from Super Zeri Ai. You just, you have to make a decision and do it fast. Um, you can't, you can't just sit around in Super Zeri Ai anymore. Fair dues. All right. It's basically that, all right? You can't, um, they don't want you to do uh, Kiai up close at the moment because of the whole thingy. Um, uh, that's that's a grey zone because it doesn't say in the in, in their guidance that that's Hansoku. It just says don't do it. Uh, but lots of places are interpreting that as Hansoku, but it doesn't say that it's Hansoku. It's not included in that. Uh, and then some other stuff like uh, Gakukota, where you put the Shinai on the other side. They don't want you to do that too much. That was the same before, to be fair. Um, or when you separate, you have to separate in Kamai, not just walk backwards, you no know, Kamai. One that's un one that's massively massively misinterpreted, I think, is uh, that you you're not allowed to just enter Tsubazeri Ai whilst blocking all the time and not engage with Shobu, but people forget that second bit where you it's Hansoku to not engage with the Shobu. This is the same as it was before. It's not a big change, but I think some people you some wishful thinking going on. Um, that if you block it all, block it all like this, it's, it's hand soccer. It's not. It's absolutely not. Um, it's a misinterpretation of the rules to say that it is. So, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go further on that one because that's gonna get me upset. <laughs> okay. Uh, I I think that's basically covered it anyway. Next one. Uh, is there a certain ratio for height to shinai length for children? I'm looking to pick up a shinai for my seven-year-old daughter who's 130 centimetre range. Um, what size shinai should be looking for? It's difficult to say. Uh, there's not a ratio, no. Uh, normally, for a child that age, I'd probably say like a size 30, 3 zero. Um, But be prepared she'll outgrow that quite quickly so if you wanted to get her a, th a 32 or 3.2 that'd be fine too it'd be a bit heavy for her at the minute but it should be all right with it um you could do that if you don't want to buy her another one in three three or four months <laughs> so yeah it's hard with little kids like with shinai it's harder with shinai than it is for borgo people often worry about borgo for little kids, say like, oh, what they're gonna grow out of it, but I'd say they don't grow out of the bulger that quickly. So what you do is we we adjust the men's size, so um, we add extra space in the men's size. You put a pad in there, and then as they grow, you can take it out. You know, uh, a, like a kid can easily use a bulger set from the age of seven up to like the age of twelve or thirteen. Um, there's no no problem there. Uh, and then and then. After that, if they're like 12 or 13 already, um, you, you know, you can get them a bogus set that'll last them pretty much into adulthood. Uh, Fish Sensei, can you articulate the inclusion of Kirikaishi as a Shinsa requirement up to Sandan in the UK and Europe? In the US, it's only a requirement through the Q ranks, and I wanted your take on the rationale for its inclusion through the lower Dan exams and how much emphasis is placed on it from a panelist perspective. Thank you for your time and all that you do. Thank you very much. Uh, so it depends in Europe. It's different. In the UK, we do we do Kirikaishi up to Sandan, um, and this is the case in uh, some other countries. Um, in Japan, it's a bit different. In Japan, it's really dependent on the prefecture, all right, because um, grading up to fifth dan in Japan is uh, regulated by each individual prefectural kendo federation, um, and that means that at different ones, the grading requirements are different. Okay, so uh, I've seen ones where they don't have Kirikaishi, they just have the, the Jitsugi uh, or the Tachiai. <coughs> and I've seen ones where they have not just Kirikaishi, but they have Uchikomi as well uh, for up to Sandan. 
so um, <clears throat> there's, it depends on the actual uh, prefecture. Uh, in Europe, I know that there's some countries that do uh, Kirikaishi all the way up to 5th Dan too. So um, it depends. Now, um, in terms of in the UK, yeah, we do up to Sandan. Um, it is useful as a panellist, uh, especially... Um, I'd say up to Sandan is, is an, a, if you're going to have it, up to Sandan is a pretty appropriate one because that's where we're still judging technical level. Um, it's interesting to see how they've got the grasp of Kirikaishi at each level so we can properly assess uh, their kendo progression. It does play a big role. If you fail the Kirikaishi section, you fail the grading in, as a whole, even if you do two very good jitsugi. Um, so, yeah, it, it's... Um, I, 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 I quite like having it uh, up to Sandan. Um, would it be the end of the world if it wasn't there? Probably not. Um, we could still make the, the judgments without it, certainly. But it does make it a little bit easier. Especially for, like, Ikkyu Shodan. Definitely makes it easier for that. But for... Uh, even for Nidan and Sandan, though, it is, it is helpful to see how they are... You know, uh, how they grasp the concept of Kikentai no Ichi, alright, because you do see a lot of, even if they look alright in the Tachi Ai, still they're not quite able to move with proper Kikentai no Ichi when it comes to Suriyashi, yeah, um, when they're doing their Sayumen strikes in the Kirikaishi, it's not all formed together, so, so yeah, I think it's pretty useful. Okay, last one. Hi Andy, uh, the recent weather has been rather warm here in the UK, uh, so we're having to adjust slightly in our keiko. Uh, when it's super hot, do you just do normal practice or do you tone it down slightly? Also with that in mind, what's your favourite ice cream or ice lolly? <laughs> so, okay, um, it's quite hot in the UK at the minute, it's quite warm, um, it's been like... I know down in London it got to like 36 to 38 degrees a couple of days ago. It's like standard Japanese summer weather. <laughs> um, but I know that, that, that we're not so used to it here. Um, it's not been as warm up here where I am. Maybe it's around 30, 32, something like that sometimes. Um, it's not like that, like that now. Um, it's been in the sort of high 20s, I think. Um, no, I don't really tone it down that much. <laughs> I just advise all my students to make sure they drink plenty of water. We open the windows uh, and stuff like that. And everybody then to judge their own condition. Um, but it's not... Like, I actually like this weather for Kendo. This is my favourite Kendo weather. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Like, in Japan, it was a lot hotter than this. A lot hotter and sweatier than this. Uh, and it was a lot harder practice too, um, so you know we didn't we we didn't have aircon in the dojo or anything like that before we start saying that sort of thing. <laughs> Anybody out there? We didn't have any of that stuff, um, but uh, yeah, I mean you have to be sensible still, right? You have to be sensible. But I I personally quite like it. I quite like the the weather like this. Nice hot sweaty cake or it's great. Um, <laughs> I think it's my favourite. Uh, about my favourite ice cream uh, is uh, it's called Palm Palm. It's a Japanese one. It's like a it's like a Magnum if you're in the UK, but it's not overpriced. And <laughs> I like Magnums too because it's the closest thing to Palm. But the Palm is like the like Magnums. Magnums like a UK version. It's like I don't know if you have it in the US or in other countries, but it's like a block of ice cream with chocolate on the outside and then it sticks. Basically, somebody got a chalk ice, right? If you know what a chalk ice is. Chalk ice was something we had when I was a kid. You never, I don't see them these days, but it was like ice cream coated in chocolate in a wrapper. And they were like cheap. You bought them from the supermarket in boxes or whatever. You went to your, 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 your grandparents' house and that's what they gave you in the summer. It was like, yay, chalk ice is cool. And then somebody came along, stuck a stick on it and started tripling the price and calling it a magnum, right? It's like, wow. But I still like them. <laughs> I like Magnums too, uh, so like the ice cream with chocolate on it is my sort of thing. I am not good with ice lollies or I think in America you call them popsicles, like the frozen ice stuff. 
or it makes me cringe, like a sort of ice thing, I can't deal with it. So, like, uh, I'm, I'm more of an ice cream person. But the, the palm in Japan, perfect balance between uh, the bitterness of the chocolate, it's the right bitterness of cho chocolate, like the British Magnum is pretty sweet chocolate, but the, the Japanese one, it's a little bit more closer to dark chocolate, it's milk chocolate, it's more like that, it's close to dark chocolate, perfect balance of ice cream in the middle, spot on, proper miss that, wouldn't mind some of them now. Anyway, we're at the end of the video. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Um, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, shop at Kendo Star. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.